Alex Salmon finally gives evidence against Nicola Sturgeon, BBC Scotland ignores the coverage and support for a Scottish referendum continues to go down. But before we start the show, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel. We're so close to 230,000 subscribers. Now, I was talking to Lacey, we've come up with a plan for you guys. If you can uh, help us reach 300,000 subscribers by the 21st of June, which is the end of lockdown, after the, all the measures are over, we're going to hire a pub or a venue somewhere to host an event and have a drink with you guys. And now I'm going to have uh, more details for you guys in the coming days. Uh, but yeah, as I said, if you could help us, you know, if you have any friends or family members that could join the channel, uh, help us reach 300,000 subscribers by the end of lockdown. We're going to have a party and we're going to have drinks with you guys and you're all invited. Now, let's get on with the show. Hello everyone and welcome to today's program. Uh, so earlier today we finally had Alex Salmon appearing in front of the Scottish Parliament to give his uh, evidence against Nicola Sturgeon and uh, her team. It, it's been a very chaotic day. He came out with a number of uh, lines that will be completely damning um, for uh, Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, let's go over what actually happened today and also talk about the reaction to it because the Scottish Sun actually started reporting on this uh, as he was giving evidence, uh, saying that Alex Salmon told the inquiry that Scotland has been failed by its leaders and the SNP government. Uh, so this is a whole pro problem because Alex Salmon used to be for, uh, the first minister and, uh, you know, it wasn't a perfect government, but it was definitely better than uh, what we currently have under Nicola Sturgeon. So he was, on the one hand, um, boasting about his own performance when he was leader. On the, on the other hand, he was exposing the current problems uh, that Nicola Sturgeon has from the cover-ups uh, to the actual, you know, as he says, uh, lying to Scottish Parliament and everything else. And he says that this is now bringing down the chances of any uh, a referendum for Scottish independence. Uh, so he claimed that Scotland has been failed. Uh, he said that the, the conduct of Nicola Sturgeon's government doesn't meet the core principles of the Scottish Parliament. Um, now, I'm not really sure exactly what that means because um, we've seen since the devolution started, uh, Scottish um, administrations repeatedly have uh, failed Scotland, regardless of uh, who was leader. And this continues to happen regardless of which party, whether it's the Labour Party or the SNP in power. Now, Alex Salmon said that the Scottish government is no longer true to the principles of openness, accountability and transparency, which are the core principles. Uh, fair, that's, that is true. He says, I remember because I was there. The failures of leadership are many and obvious. And yet, yet not a single person has taken responsibility, no resignations, uh, not a single sacking. Yeah, it's an absolute um, uh, admonition. I mean, the, the, my point, point is that uh, when you have Alex Salmon appearing in front of uh, this committee that in includes SNP members and the Labour Party members and others, you would expect, uh, firstly, the, the questions to be actually robust. Firstly, you had Alex Salmon performing really well. He was very confident. He, he knew exactly uh, what sort of questions they're going to ask him. Secondly, a lot of the things that, uh, whether it was the chair or other people that were bringing it up, they weren't actually even relevant to what was happening. They tried to keep uh, changing the subject. He kept trying to talk about uh, the case that happened before, and uh, obviously the jury uh, decided to say he's innocent. And um, they didn't really want to talk about certain issues. They tried to focus on the actual points. Uh, there was a whole division, and the media also reacted to it. Uh, but the problem we have is that he's now saying that uh, Scotland is becoming a failed state. This is what he said during the inquiry and you know again the role of the crown office in politics uh, and everything else when it comes to the blockers that they had that's true and uh, I'm, i don't really think that it's becoming a failed state politically speaking scotland is currently a failed state because it's the its government is letting uh, its own people down uh, from domestic politics and policies that uh, nicola sturgeon has introduced to the way they're handling everything else even when it comes to international affairs we've seen the handling of Brexit and how they want to still be close to the European Union. This will continue regardless of who's in charge of um, the SNP government. Now, he's uh, also talked about uh, the chances for the independence referendum. He said that the move to independence, uh, which I have sought all my political life and continue to seek, must be accompanied uh, by institutions whose leadership is strong and robust and capable of protecting each and every citizen. Yes. Uh, but that currently isn't happening. And he basically is saying that at this point, uh, the chances are low. 
and uh, we are, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, opinion polls and the results that we have that is showing that the support for the referendum is going down. The support for the SNP in general is going down despite the fact that the opposition parties are completely divided from the Labour Party to the Conservatives as well. Now, one of the issues that uh, Alex Salmon brought up was the fact that uh, he says recently Nicola Sturgeon once again has broken the ministerial code by claiming in one of her daily briefings that, ha that she has uh, that's supposed to be on for public health, but she keeps using that platform to talk about politics. Uh, he says that because Nicola Sturgeon is still claiming that Alex Salmon uh, you know, was wrong, despite the fact that the jury has said he's innocent, that is also breaking the rules itself. Uh, again, that goes back to what the establishment in Scotland actually think about this. Uh, so they have actually come back. Uh, the faculty advocates have come back to say that, yes, it is a problem. Maintain uh, maintaining the confidence requires, amongst other things, recognition of the importance of the independent role of the Lord Advocate, the independent role of the court, and perhaps more importantly, the vital part of the verdicts of impartial uh, juries in criminal proceedings. Yes, they're saying that, you know, we have to respect the rule of law. And Nicola Surgeon continues to come out to say that, well, no, I still think Alex Salmon was wrong. This doesn't really go with the rule of law. Whether it was right or wrong, that's what the jury decided and that's what the facts are. Uh, but, but that's another thing that Alex Salmon is now accusing Nicola Sturgeon of. On Twitter, there were a lot of reactions. One part of the inquiry was that um, they said Alex Salmon accused the government that the choice not to concede and the bill being racked up to the level it did proves that the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, pursued him personally for political reasons using taxpayers' money. Yes, as we said before, yesterday I mentioned this, that um, the legal advice to Nicola Sturgeon and her government was that, well, you're going to have to use taxpayers' money on this. Secondly, you're going to lose. Are you sure you still want to use taxpayers' money on this? And they said yes. Now, that is also a problem. And, you know, who's going to answer? Is it going to be Nicola Sturgeon? Or is it going to be the chief executive, Peter Morrell, her husband? We're not really sure at this point because it's a governmental matter rather than a party matter. Um, but that's what they actually did. As I said, um, the coverage on this was interesting because uh, the BBC News and Sky News were showing this. BBC Scotland completely ignored the coverage. Yes, you could say that BBC News was already showing it, but um, there's a point, there's a reason we have all these uh, regional channels and all the local ones. So BBC Scotland should at least point out, you know, just show some sort of um, coverage of what was happening. While Alex Simon was um, at the actual inquiry, they were showing this. They were talking about Pride in London, uh, how it could return in September. Why is there news about London uh, when it comes to BBC Scotland and their page? Uh, so they were, they were basically showing everything else apart from the coverage of the inquiry. Um, so that's also another problem for the BBC uh, because uh, just because, you know, they, they assumed that we were, they were showing it on BBC News, so everyone should use that channel. But then what's the point of these regional channels? What's the point of BBC Scotland? Again, you're using taxpayers' money to have this channel. You're not actually showing the uh, inquiry on it. Now, um, the main focus for Nicola Sturgeon and her party is not this. Well, it's to survive this scandal and then just focus on their independence uh, goal. And they are currently giving out these letters and leaflets about how the independence referendum too is now in the post. <laughs> it's on its way. Don't worry. And they got a huge photo of Nicola Sturgeon on these letters saying that it doesn't matter, guys. We're still going to do it. Uh, everything's fine. There are no issues. Um, this is what people in Scotland are receiving right now. Uh, the SNP uh, are using lots of money uh, to actually um, share this across the, um, the country. The issue is that the support is going down. The latest opinion polls are now showing that when it comes to the parties them themselves, the SNP have gone down. Uh, by three points to 52 percent and there was there was a point but they, they got very close to 60 percent which was quite embarrassing for the opposition parties uh, there's one main reason that as i said the conservatives are 23 percent labor 15 percent and you know ignore the others lip dams and greens just have no ch uh, chance but it's because the other parties especially the main two parties are so divided and so incompetent that people in Scotland at this point just feel like this is one party state. It's just that's the only choice you have, the SNP. But despite that, the support is going down. Again, Ipsos Murray also published their opinion poll on 
the Scottish independence voting intention, that's also gone down. So the yes, the yes campaign has gone down four points to 48%, so less than half now. And uh, even excluding the undecided, um, they are still, you know, they've gone down six points. So just above 50%, but gone down six points. So the no campaign is coming up. Uh, so this, you know, the honeymoon period post Brexit that people thought everyone in Scotland now want to leave the UK to join the European Union is not going to happen. It's still 50-50 relatively, uh, but it's not really a, a big majority for the yes campaign. Uh, but the, this uh, inquiry has just started again. So Monday, we're going to have a lot of more updates on uh, this whole chaos and uh, what's going to happen to Nicola Sturgeon and her leadership, uh, so I'll keep you guys posted. Now, in today's news in your world, we have the latest story from one of our subscribers, Ian, who got in touch to tell us a story about uh, his uh, daughter, Naomi, and her husband, Bradley. Naomi and Bradley gave birth to their first son back in April, two months before uh, he was actually uh, due, uh, and uh, there was a lot of issues uh, health-wise. Uh, they told them that uh, he only has less than a 50-50 chance to survive, and so he had to stay in a hospital uh, for another two months. And again, because of everything going on, it was difficult to visit, face masks and everything else. Uh, now, this boy is now 10 months old. He's survived. He's healthy. And they've actually decided to call him because it, his dad, Bradley, is called Bradley Jones. They've decided to call him Indiana. Indiana Jones, because apparently he went through a lot. This is a photo that we have of uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, so I'm glad that everything's actually going well for the family. Um, Ian also mentioned that his mother unfortunately passed away in March, a month uh, before uh, Indiana was born. And uh, But his uh, father is currently in Spain. He's 89. He watches the channel. Uh, so thanks for watching. And they're waiting for all these measures to finish so that he could come back to the UK and meet the family again. So uh, again, this is great news that you know, at least something um, good happening. And I hope that all these measures, lockdown finishes so you could all reunite with your family and everybody else. Uh, thanks so much, Ian, for sending us your story and uh, good, good luck uh, to uh, Naomi and Bradley as well. Now, if you guys also want to have a chance to be featured in a news in your world, feel free to share us any positive stories that you have, any personal achievements, shout out to family member or friends, uh, send it to lacy at myatc.co.uk and don't forget to attach any photos or videos related to the story as well. Thanks again for watching, I'm MyATC and I'll see you guys in the next video.